in week one of the course where we are in the very beginning stages of studying uh, lifespan, human development. As we study the subject, we're really seeking to answer uh, questions of how people change and how they remain the same over time. So this week we're really going over basics, developmental theories, some of the issues and influences on development, uh, methods that developmental researchers use to gather data upon which all these theories are actually uh, based and developed. Theories are really merely just a way of explaining the biological, psychological, sociocultural, and life cycle forces that impact human development. As Christians, we also seek to understand how people develop spiritually. Now, the writers of human development textbooks do recognize that people have a spiritual component. But when you read a typical human development textbook, it is not approaching that from a Christian worldview, uh, from that Christian perspective that we have. It just looks at spirituality in a general kind of sense. So that really is the reason that we have brought into this course the reciprocating self, which really looks at human development from a theological Christian perspective. So how does this understanding of God mature from childhood to adolescence? We're looking at all of that. I've been studying and teaching human development for a long time. So these developmental theories are quite familiar to me and uh, you know I, I just know them sort of like the back of my hand because I've been looking at them for so many years. But for many of you, this is the first time you're gonna actually hear the theorist. Some of you may have studied developmental theory uh, as an undergraduate student, if, particularly if you studied education or, or uh, psychology, human development. Um, and, and others of you may actually know more than you think you might um, as you begin this study. For instance, if you've ever had an infant in your home or worked with babies in your church, most likely you have experienced or at least you have seen a child experience what we call separation anxiety at around age six months. You've seen it, you've experienced it, you know it when you see it, but you might not have known that that was actually called separation anxiety. So over the course of this semester, you're gonna see that a lot of the things that you know, even almost intuitively about children and teenagers and adults, um, there's a supporting theory behind that that's labeled it but this is the way that God designed us. An understanding of human development is going to underpin much of what we do as Christian educators. For example, because we know that young children learn through their senses, we are going to provide young children opportunities to touch, taste, and feel in order to learn. So if we want to teach young children about uh, food that God gives us to enjoy, God gives us food, we're going to actually let them touch, taste, and feel a banana. That's how they learn. Because we know involvement leads to better understanding, we offer opportunities for all ages to do and not just sit in Christian education, to be involved in their spiritual formation, not just by listening, but by doing, by serving others, by teaching others. An understanding of these theories is important because you will be interacting with them for the rest of the semester. So understanding them, knowing them, and being familiar with the names of the men and women that develop these theories, put labels on things, if you will, those, that's important things for you to understand. And let me give a word of preview here for those of you who may be considering even further education in Christian education, such as a doctor of ministry degree or a PhD or an a EDD understanding developmental theory is quite important as you move through your educational process. So, um, so pay attention to developmental theory because it's, it's an integral part of education, be that secular or Christian education. Mm -hmm.